Hello my fellow paint monsters, how are you today? This time we are further experimenting with paints from our car creation. This week I want to focus on color mixing alone. I think the set of paints I got from our car offer such a wide range of possibilities that it's going to be interesting anyway. First we're going to do a mixing chart as usual. I'm going to use all the colors that I got from Troop T to show you as many possibilities uh, these watercolors offer as I can. Stay with me until the end of this video to see how these watercolors perform in action. I'm going to be doing some little demonstration illustrations at the end. So here we go. The colors that you're going to get when mixing these paints uh, are going to be predominantly muted and toned down uh, as there is no bright yellow in the set and the liquid deep is a rather subtle color as well. The Ercolano Blue can get quite intense, so I think it's going to give us an interesting range of greens. I'm going to show you that after the mixing chart, and as you know, I do love greens. I noticed while making this chart uh, that mixing together Lake Red Deep and Caput Mortum can create a color very close to Potter's Pink. So after I'm done with this, I want to try and make a comparison and show you different mixes of these two colors in different ratios compared to Potter's Pink. Oxide green is a very nice color for mixing, but you need to be slightly careful because it's very intense and it can easily dominate the other color that you're using in your mix. So make sure to add it little by little. As you can see, if you adjust the ratios, the color you can get from mixing Lake Red Deep and Caput Mortum can get incredibly close to Potter's Pink. It looks very similar, it granulates, so it's not that I recommend you not to buy Potter's Pink, because I think it's awesome and I love it and I'm using it and I'm going to use it a lot. But if you don't have it, but do have Lake Red Deep and Caput Mortum, then just try mixing these and see what you can achieve because in a pinch I think these two can provide a very reasonable substitute. I want to show you all kinds of greens you can achieve with this set, so uh, I want to mix together yellow ochre and ochre blue, yellow ochre and ultramarine blue, and yellow ochre together with oxide green. 
so the range uh, is quite wide and you can further widen it by adding darker shades by mixing in some Venetian red or mouse black or castle earth possibly so you'll be able to move the dark side uh, of the green spectrum even further I didn't do that here but I love what oxide green does together when mixed with mouse black and at the very end I wanted to show you how the primary triad of this set uh, all the colors closest to the primary triad namely lake red deep yellow ochre and alkalino blue mixed together and as you can see they work very nicely together the yellow and the red are not quite vibrant enough to give you really intense shades of orange but the purples and violets are great and the greens are very nice too in my opinion and at the very very end of this video as usual i want to show you how these colors work in action so i'm going to do some small demonstration pictures with the three little guys sitting around the fire i think it was a mistake to try and use caput mortum for shading as it has too much texture for my taste castle earth is slightly smoother i mean it's grainy but the texture is more consistent so i think it would be better to use that it might have looked a little better then and I really like the grace that you can achieve by mixing these paints. I'm happy with the shades I was able to achieve in the little piece with buildings. I'm quite happy with how this little fish turned out. I think Potter's Pink and Caput Mortum and Castle Earth work very well together. And I really like the teal turquoise shades that you can get by mixing yellow ochre together with Arcolano Blue. Summing up, as you already know from my review from last week, if you watched it, I like these paints. I think they're high quality, they're well pigmented, they re-wet well and they're easy to handle. If you want to mix really vibrant, intense colours, then you're probably going to need a brighter yellow. I think Lake Red Deep is probably close enough to magenta to create vibrant oranges with lemon yellow or something similar. But I haven't tried that and this is something you need to test yourself. All in all, I like these paints and I think they're good value for money. There's nothing I did not like about them. So if you like what you're seeing, go get them. That's all I've got for you today. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next week. There's going to be another review of watercolors by another maker. If you want to have a look at a sneak peek and perhaps a chance to guess who this maker might be, make sure to visit hungry for paint on Instagram on Wednesday. Also, I've just come back from my holidays, so I'm a little bit behind, but I'm working hard to catch up and I'm going to publish the delayed reviews on Hungry for Paint blog. If you like this video, press the like button, leave a small comment below, and you can always make a small donation on Coffee. You'll find all the links in the description of this video. Thank you for watching and see you next week. Bye bye!